Bruno, nine points. All four field goals have been dunks. Throw in a free throw and four rebounds. That young man has been outstanding in the early going. So too of the Gators shooting the basketball over 50% in this first half. Part of it, Mike, they've played inside out. They've gotten their feet in the paint, be it on a post catch or penetration, and then they've kicked out. So those threes have been outstanding looks. Hill challenging and draws the foul. William Jackson went for the block, and so too did Obede. And it's also been their defense, too, for Florida. I mean, this is the fifth best team defensively in the country. So as much as they've struggled offensively, they have been stout defensively and have been to start this game. Casey Hill misfiring in the first free throw. Mentioned earlier, Casey Hill, a former McDonald's All-American, a starter last year, started the first part of this season. Coach White telling us, you know, Casey Hill actually came up to him and said, you know what, you need to start Chiosa. He's playing better basketball. How often do you see a player actually do that? It's pretty rare. Georgia really having trouble with the pressure by the Gators. Almost another turnover. Florida just playing so hard. Frazier up top, Maiden on a tray. And a whistle down low. And the foul is on Florida as you had Obede crashing on the offensive glass. He got pushed. One of the byproducts of the 2-2-1, two -two which Florida is playing after made baskets. They're in a three-quarter 2-2-1 two -two containment. One of the byproducts is by the time Georgia is initiating their offense, there's only about 15 seconds, 20 seconds left on that clock. How many times already in this first half have we seen that shot clock for Georgia get down to the seven, eight second range? What surprises me is, Chris, when you talk about Georgia, the strength of their team is quality veteran guards. They got three of them on the floor and they're still having problems. Well, there's some pesky guards out there for Florida getting after them. It's part of the 2-2-1. Two -two We've got Casey Hill, Chris Chioza playing together, Kayvon Allen. They're not tall in stature, but they will get after you defensively. That last foul, by the way, on Finney Smith. So he's on the bench now with two fouls and over seven minutes to play in the first half. Man buries the second 10-point game here in the O'Connell Center. 2 teams that most people had projected to be in the NCAA tournament at the beginning of the year. Chioza draws a bump foul on the perimeter. You had Georgia and Florida picked in the neighborhood of 5-6, depending on which poll you looked at. Everybody wants to get off to a good start in conference play. Does so much good for the psyche if you can win that first game in your league. First sign of zone here, a 1-2-2 two, two from Georgia. Gives them the opportunity to switch any crossing actions, force Florida to beat them over the top. Chioza with a heat check three. Man, probes, man, has it rejected by Egbudu, and there to clean it up is Mayton. Well, Mayton leads them in scoring, and one of the reasons is he's an opportunist. He's done a nice, nice job cleaning up old boards like that. Just a little scrappy stuff to get him two points. How about this for Mayton? Only player in the SEC top ten in scoring, rebounding, field goal, and free throw percentage. That's impressive. He, he's the most improved for me in yep. the SEC. I'm with you. He, he is light years ahead of where he was last season. Chioza on the pump fake draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. And think about who he had to replace uh, you know, inside for Georgia last season. Those two guys, Marcus Foster and Nemanja Jurišić, were terrific. And Yante Maton has been as good almost by himself. Look at those numbers. He increases, only scored about five points a game last year, giving him 16 so far this year. Chioza knocks down the first, and your point is a good one. Jurišić and Thornton were so good for Georgia last season inside so reliable the question was going to be who's going to take over how are you going to make up for all the scoring and rebounding those two provided the answer has been Yonte Maton a talented sophomore from Pontiac Michigan 
Here's more of that full court pressure. It has plagued Georgia thus far. And then back into the man-to-man. -man. Nice cut. And a foul from behind by Egbunu. It's Super Tuesday on ESPN, presented by Hotels.com, and it should be something to see. We've got the best freshman in college basketball, Ben Simmons, leading LSU against Tyler Ewis. Very good point guard for the 10th-ranked Kentucky Wildcats. That's at 9 o'clock Eastern time. I don't know about you, but I know where I'm going to be doing when that game is on, right in front of the TV. Ben Simmons alone is worth the price of admission. And Tyler Ewis, He's the smallest guy on the floor whenever he's out there. But Kentucky, without him, they'd probably have a couple more losses. He's been their best player. Doesn't take much to get you on the couch in front of a TV, Mike. <laughs> you are very so true on that. It's not a high standard we're setting there. That is true. Very fair point by yourself, Chris Patola. Nine-point lead for Florida. Gators with the basketball. You see the zone. Florida spent a lot of time executing their sets against this in the shoot around today. Nice attack there by Devin Robinson. A nasty collision with Paul Gino. A little bit of uh, frustration there with Devin Robinson. Certainly nothing malicious. Paul Gino just crashing in, trying to do what he does best, which is rebound. But he just. Again, gets himself good position. Devin Robinson taken out of the starting lineup tonight. He's got so much talent. I mean, you see his size. He's 6'8", long arms, a sophomore. And I think just, you know, matching effort over 40 minutes has been some issues. Shot selection, something he's still learning. But you see the physical gifts that he has. Robinson, seven early points, member of the SEC All-Freshman team a year ago. Can't get the shooter's bounce on the second. Man, crossover, takes it strong, offensive foul. Wow. I mean, to me, that's a block. I thought Kavarius got there late, and then I'm not saying you have to fall over, but Kavarius was the one initiating that contact. I thought Charles Mann should be at the foul line on that one. And that's the second foul on Mann. With 5.20 to go at half number one. Georgia zoning it up. Gators trying to find a crease. There it is up top to Allen. Bullseye. What a pass. I mean, half of their threes for Florida in this first half have been assisted by Chris Chioza. What a find, a heads-up play. And how about Kavon Allen moving into that pocket of the zone to get himself a shot? Inside, and a thunder slam by Obede, a freshman who was banged up earlier in the year. You see that brace on his right shoulder. He's healthy now, and they really think he's going to be a good one. Out of Atlanta is Obede, a powerful player. Quick jump. Robinson feeling it. Robinson connecting. You got to like the response from Robinson. He did not play well in that loss to Florida State. His body language was not good. He has responded tonight. A game high 10 for Robinson. The Gators, the worst three point shooting team in the league. They're 5 for 10. And an offensive foul push in the back by Obede. You know, one thing about young teams is they typically have short memories. That can be good or bad. In the case of that loss to Florida State the other night at the buzzer on a great shot by Dwayne Bacon, this Florida team had two good days of practice, Mike White said, and they have come out and responded in this first half. Head coach Mike White, you know, he told us at shoot around today, because he had some other coaching opportunities the last couple of years. He said, you know what? I was real happy at Louisiana Tech. 
did some historical things there. Program was on the rise. Family was happy there in Ruston, Louisiana. He said, but when Florida called, it was just too good to pass up. He said, I'm never leaving the state of Florida. I'm happy right here. What a home run hire. And I give Jeremy Foley a lot of credit. You know, a little bit outside the box, but you get a guy, a young guy, who comes from good stock and is going to be a great coach here at Florida. There's the athletic director for the University of Florida who's done a tremendous job. Of course, hired Billy Donovan when nobody saw that hire coming. That basically took this program to a, a whole new level, and that's what he believes Coach White can do as well. well and I call it outside the box because a, a lot of ADs now, they want to use search firms. And Jeremy Foley said, look, I know the guy who's going to be right for my program. And he goes out, he gets a Billy Donovan out of Marshall. He gets a Mike White out of Louisiana Tech, two guys who had great success at those schools. And he's brought great excitement, has White. I mean, he's going to get this thing rolling, and that guy right there understands the process of building an athletic department. Meanwhile, an over-the-back foul on Oak Bay Day after the missed free throw by Yonte Maiden, so he cannot complete the three-point play. Oak Bay Day has two fouls. And the Gators are in the bonus. A double bonus, in fact, as Robinson Knocks down the first. He's got a game-high 13 points. The Gators up by 15. And this is a quality Georgia team that came in on a four-game winning streak. Robinson splits the freebies. Gaines drives, Gaines. Contact, no whistle. Loose basketball. Clip. How about Kenny Gaines? Stayed with it and sticks it back in. There's not a guard in this league that plays harder than number 12 for Georgia. He's, he's a really good athlete, even on the miss. See the ability to hang and then just stuck with it, like you said. Shot clock ticking down to six. And three seconds. On the Gators. How about the movement here? Kevon Allen finds the open space, the top of that zone, and drains it. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. Florida Gators out to a 37-24 lead here in the first half. SEC opener for everybody here today, including these two teams, Mike Morgan alongside Chris Patola and Chris, it's that time of year. Happy New Year, first of all, Happy to you year, and everybody friend. out Absolutely. there. So we talked about these two teams, high expectations coming in, but everybody can improve their game a little bit. New Year's resolution, what would you like to see each one of these teams do better in 2016? I think if you're Georgia, they've got to become a better rebounding team, only a plus one margin on the year. And if you're going to beat those teams at the top of the SEC, you've got to be able to rebound the basketball. And then for Florida, we've seen how good they can be when they make shots. This is example A tonight. If they can become a team that can jump up to a 30% three-point shooting team, something they've only done once on the season, they could be much, much better. Yeah. They came in at just 27%. That was dead last in the SEC. And there you look at the preseason poll. This is the media poll, which doesn't differentiate much from the coaches poll. Georgia picked fifth. Florida picks sixth. I think just about everybody acknowledges this league is going to get at least five. And if you get maybe six, potentially even seven, both these teams could be on the proverbial bubble. You just never know. So everybody try to improve a little bit as the second part of the college basketball season begins with conference play as Kenny Gaines continues to impress on the mid-range jumper. Both these programs, Mike White, Mark Fox, they have controlled what they can control, that being their schedule. Florida number one strength of schedule in the BPI, Georgia ninth strength of schedule in the BPI. So they've taken care of that piece. Now you gotta win games in conference. Gators slowing it down a little bit in the half court with the shot clock now under five. Allen has to force one. Air ball, follow. Also missed the rim, so a shot clock violation. Now coming up at the half, Brandon Fitzgerald, Paul Biancardi will take good care of you. Go around the Southeastern Conference, talk about the SEC and the bowl games as well. 
Georgia Bulldogs going bowling. It's been a great start for the SEC in the bowl games, eight and two at my last count. Frazier coughs it up right into the waiting hands of Kayvon Allen. Allen all the way. And an offensive foul, great defense. That is the kind of gritty work that Kenny Paul Gino does. See, I didn't like that call though, Mike. I, to me, if, if the offensive player can slide by, like I thought Allen did, I don't think that's a charge. I think it's gotta be a block. I mean, Gino's there, there's no question about it. But the contact is like nicking his right shoulder. I and mean, I think that's a good offensive play and you should reward the offensive player there. How about a no call? Well, see, I, to me, there was something there. I mean, it was either a charge or a block. Okay. So I think you have to call something. I don't like the no call, but we'll disagree on block charge. <laughs> Gaines feeling it. And that's going to be a reach-in foul on Robinson. I know one thing. There were no lack of whistles in the Memphis-South Carolina game that preceded us. I think they're still calling fouls in that one. Was there any blood? I mean, the number of fouls, was there any blood? South Carolina remaining undefeated. That's the good news, Frank Martin and company. Have been unblemished this year. But that game had 67 fouls in it. You and I had a game in Knoxville just the other day where there was something like five or six fouls in the entire half. Yeah. 67 fouls. I, I think for the most part, Chris, with all the new rules, I give coaches and players credit. They've adjusted. We have not seen that many whistles. Yeah. Alley you pass. And Hill can't hold on. And then a foul is submarining into a couple of Georgia players was Hayes. Chioza throwing the alley-oop to the 6-1 Casey Hill. We talked about what an athlete Hill is. But it's one of those high-risk, high-reward kinds of plays where Florida has lived on the edge for a lot of the year. And this is a team, I mean, they, they're 11th in the country in turnover percentage is Florida. They only turn it over 10 times a game. They're just one of those unforced giveaways. Each team with the benefit of the double bonus the rest of the way for the final minute 54 as Mayton knocks down the first. He's got eight points on the night. On top of everything else that Mayton has done well this season, he's shooting 78% for the free throw line. Very good number for a big man. Young man who left the state of Michigan. Had a lot of schools in that part of the country that were on him late. But he has a fascination with reptiles. Georgia has a program that you can actually work with reptiles. So uh, the love of snakes actually helping the Georgia Bulldogs land a primo recruit. Whatever it takes, right? You know, snakes are one of the most misunderstood animals. Now, I'm terrified of them. Uh -huh. But, you know, they've, they've walked the earth with no legs. Yeah. So they've slithered the earth for centuries. Uh huh. And we're all terrified of them. Some Hill. are poisonous, I get it, you know, and I understand that, but most aren't. They're just trying to make a living with no legs. I mean, come on. I learn more and more about you every game, Chris Patola, and it frightens me dearly. Walker fouled on the stick back. Do you know what the study of snakes is called? I haven't the foggiest. It is herpetology. Oh, my goodness. Mike Morgan, you are just going next level tonight. I've you are you are ready for conference play. You you have upped your game for conference play. Snakes are misunderstood. <laughs> Remember that next time a cobra's in my backyard. Walker knocks down the free throw. Nine point game. Florida's really outplayed Georgia from the jump. The Bulldogs though, still very much in this basketball game. And there's a steal. Hill. Breakaway, missed it. Shot was altered by Willridge. Here come the dogs the other way. Gaines, Mayton. Can't hold on. Jump ball and the arrow to Georgia. I'll tell you what, when Mike White plays Casey Hill and Chris Chioza together, I mean, certainly they give up size, but those two guards are so quick. The anticipation there by Casey Hill 
to get the takeaway. Then he turns it to the other end. Doesn't convert. But those two guards, again, they're small. But if that front line can rebound, those two guards are terrific on the de defensive end together. Gaines will pull the trigger for the baseline. 21 to shoot. A little more than a minute remaining. And an entertaining first half here from the O-Dome in Gainesville. Shot clock under 10 for Frazier. Gets a flat screen. Frazier pulls up and buries it right between the eyes of Devon Walker. It was a good ball screen there by Yante Mayton, and then what a pull up. Gets to a spot, stops on the dime. Georgia on a nine to one run, the last 2.48. Out of bounds. Oh, they're gonna call a foul on Georgia. That was a trail official that called that. Mark Fox is incredulous on the Georgia bench. I've seen that look from Mark Fox quite a bit over his seven years in Athens. That's his way of letting you know he didn't agree with the call. That's not his happy face. That is not his happy face. The Southpaw can't connect on the first. Justin Leon, a junior by way of Conway, Arkansas, former junior college All-American last year. Leon was committed to go to Louisiana Tech when Mike White got the job here. Convince Leon to join him. Now, this has been a good end of half if you're Georgia. Two missed free throws there. The missed layup by Casey Hill. A couple turnovers. And Georgia has capitalized. A chance to go into the half. Only down five, potentially. Dogs will play for the final shot. Frazier now goes to work with eight. Now down to five. Frazier. Inside, Mayton, hook shot, too strong, and that's how half number one will come to a close. It was a half dominated by the Gators, but give the Bulldogs credit, they closed to within seven, 38-31, our halftime score. Brendan Fitzgerald and Paul Biancardi will take care of you back at our halftime studios. Thank you very much. Welcome into the ESPNU Halftime Report. Brendan Fitzgerald alongside Paul B. and Cardi. So Florida has a lead looking for an SEC win in its opener. Georgia looking for its first win in Gainesville since 2002. What have you seen so far? Well, Mike White told me this week on the phone they're looking for an offensive identity. I think they found it tonight with their three-point shooting. If they can shoot like that, they can be a factor in the SEC. Coming into this game, they couldn't make free throws. They couldn't make deep shots from the outside. They had to rely on their zone pressure at home to get the crowd into it. Devin Robinson, 13 points to lead the way for the Gators. They've hit six three-pointers through the early going, and they have a 38-31 lead at halftime. Elsewhere in the SEC, Ole Miss looking to go into Rupp Arena to take on Kentucky. Ole Miss took Kentucky last season to overtime. Stephon Moody, a big part of that. He was back with this one, but this one was all about Kentucky. Here in transition, it's Marcus Lee on the follow-up right there. Kentucky leads by 24 points at the half, and Marcus Lee here for another dunk. Well, Kentucky, 19 offensive rebounds, 31 misses. That's 60%. Good way to win a game on the road. How about another one there from Tyler Eulis as he goes up top. Kentucky, no problems in a win there. Texas A&M gets a win as well. Auburn, Alabama, Missouri holding serve. And South Carolina staying undefeated. South Carolina goes 46 for 53 from the free throw line in that game. You saw it here on ESPNU and beating Memphis to stay undefeated. One of three undefeated programs left in the country. Another one is Oklahoma, the number three Sooners opening up Big 12 play against Iowa State in Norman. George Niang, Buddy Heald, the big stars in this one. Let's show you what happened right to the second half we go. Isaiah Cousins knocks down the three. First lead of the ball game since the early first half. They go up 76-75. George Niang gets stripped. Ryan Spangler lays it in in transition. We love to see seniors in this game. Spangler, Hill. George is Niang. Here's Heald, spin move, that's nice. OU up 83-79 after that. Under 15 seconds left, two-point ball game. Monty Morris, good look at a three off the mark. How about the pass by George's Niang? 
Could have had the game-winning assist. But in a losing effort, so Oklahoma stays undefeated. That sets up a matchup with Kansas, perhaps a 1-2 matchup there. SMU can't go to the NCAA tournament this year. NCAA sanctions. But they are undefeated. They can win the American Conference. And looking good early on, Marcus Kennedy to Jeray Foster for the alley-oop. Shake Milton to Sterling Brown for three. SMU up three after that one. And then Nick Moore to Sterling Brown one more time. SMU playing with a purpose. They're playing for each other and for the head coach. So 59 to 46 is the score. SMU looking to move to 13 and 0. They are still in action in the second half. Maryland's up by 20 on Northwestern at halftime. The rest of the games are finals. Michigan State gutting one out against Minnesota. Big win without their best player, Denzel Valentine. They're learning how to win without their star. What other game here stands out? How about Iowa? At Mackey Arena, down 19, comes back for the win. Fran McCafferty has guys who can score the basketball. Iowa beat Michigan State, then they go on the road to beat Purdue, and there you can see Kansas as well over Baylor, 102 to 74. That sets up Kansas, Oklahoma. How about West Virginia, though? Double overtime at Kansas State. What a great win by Bob Huggins. He stayed in the zone in overtime, and it paid off. Tough to get a road win in conference. West Virginia did that earlier today on ESPNU, and Cincinnati bouncing back after Mick Cronin said his team wasn't tough enough, Paul. He was just trying to get his team going. Mick Cronin's teams are always tough, especially defensively. Certainly, uh, Tulsa caught him at the wrong time. Cincinnati gets a big win, first conference win of the season. The SEC Football Conference. Georgia was bowling against Penn State. We'll show you highlights coming up now. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Halftime score here from Gainesville, Florida. The Gators shooting lights out in the first half, leading it 38 to 31. They were the worst three-point shooting team in the league coming into tonight's action. So what do they do? They get red hot from downtown. Well, they've worked at it, and that work, is it paying off? I don't know. It certainly did in that first half. They got really good looks right there. Kayvon Allen, he's got two of those six threes. They spaced the floor, they shared it, and really created it. There's Chioza on the break, eyes behind his head, finding Devin Robinson, who also hit two. This is a team who stuck with it, and it really, really is the difference. You see Georgia, a team that can really knock it down, especially with Kenny Gaines and J.J. Frazier. They have a donut from behind the arc. Six threes for Florida. Turnovers, a factor in this game, 10 each way. And again, that has a lot to do with the tenacious defense for both these teams. And as you mentioned, no threes for Gaines or Frazier. Coach Mike White telling us today that there was one key was to keep those guys out of the scoring column from behind the arc. So far, that's been the case. Gators with the basketball up seven. Inside, Agbudu had a great first half, and he starts off the second fashion in fine fashion. And that's where it started in the first half, right? They went inside to Igbunu. They got some points at the rim, played inside out. And a good start there. You go in and onto the block, and Igbunu gets a layup. Nice position. And Georgia comes right back. My big can do what your big did. Obey day with a hook shot. Scoring in the post is about where you catch it in the angle you have. Right there, Ogbede, two feet in the paint, and a nice little jump hook. And a travel on Allen. 11th turnover on the Gators. It's interesting, Mark Fox going with Ogbede and Mayton together. The two biggest guys, most impact, impact paint players for him. Mayton into the hands of Allen, accelerating up the floor. Allen stop and go, step back, and missed a shot, tracked down by Frazier. Throw it to him. Mayton it wants him. it. He's got it, and he banks it home. That is an incredible improvement. And that's a good start. I mean, you get both those guys on the interior. Obede with a post up and then some early offense in the post. What a feed. But the lack of finish by Leon. Georgia already cutting it to five. A chance to do more here. Man. Offensive foul. That's the second time Charles Mann has been whistled for the charge. 
This is playing in the post is about where you catch it and the angle you have. Yante Mayton right on the block where he catches it and a nice angle to get over that left shoulder, which he loves. Top 10 in scoring, rebounding, field goal percentage, and free throw percentage. The sophomore, Yante Mayton. Five point game. Egbunu in the trees, draws a whole lot of traffic and attention and draws the foul. Hey, there are about eight arms surrounding the basketball. Well, he, he started at the mid post, right? It gets back to where you catch it. He didn't like it on the mid post. He reposted and got himself better position. And by doing that, he's able to go middle. The help came late and he gets to the foul line. Gaines whistled for the foul. That's his second. And the first free throw too strong by Agbunu, the former USF Bull. Didn't have to go far to transfer from Tampa to Gainesville. About a two hour commute. One out of two for the 6'11 sophomore. 12 points now for Agbunu, a six point game. You know, Agbunu only took three shots in 25 minutes against Florida State. Clearly, the emphasis for Mike White was to get him some touches and some looks today. Man, by the way, on the bench with three fouls. Kessler in for him. Gaines can't hit the short runner. Gioso thought he was poked in the eye. No whistle. And then Allen draws the foul. Meanwhile, Chris Chioza dabbing his right eye. Making sure that he's got full vision out of there. Looks like he took a finger across the right eye. Appears to be okay. And now Gaines will go to the bench for Turtle Jackson, the freshman. You know, Gaines is frustrated. Mark Fox kind of takes him out to calm him down. He had a good look there on the last possession. Didn't get it to go down. A little frustrated is Kenny Gaines. Leon fouled, had the rebound, bumped bodies with Gino. I think picked up the foul. That's already 14 fouls on Georgia, none on Florida. And for Gino, that's his fourth foul, and he'll have to go to the bench. Once you get into conference play, a little more physicality out there, Chris Patola, as the ooh, deep two is knocked down. They run a lot of under out of bounds for Kayvon Allen, does Florida. Just coming off a screen there, the defense was late, and you see the talent of the freshman to rise up. What a pretty stroke. Eight points for Allen. Inside, great and position. there is Mayton with the left hand. His game. Well, he had great position. I mean, it just again, he, he's moving as the ball moves. He's sealing off, and a nice find right at the rim. 13 points for the sophomore. Benny Smith forcing the action. And a nice box out there by Georgia Wilridge. Joining us late, Florida has led this game almost throughout. Georgia had one early lead. The Gators led it by as many as 13 in the first half. Mayton getting everything done right now. 15 for Mayton. You see the versatility. He is a guy who can hit that face-up shot consistently. And Finney Smith draws the foul. That'll be the fifth team foul on Georgia with 15.46 to play. Four-point game, Gators on top of the dogs. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Colonel Sanders Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's still finger licking good. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.
The Rowdy Reptiles coming in all shapes and sizes here in the O-Dome. Gators up by four. Yonte Mate, the young man who loves snakes, slithering his way to 15 points. He does his work. That was well done, by the way, Mike Thank you, sir. He, he does his work early here on the defensive end. But he, look at where he gets to set up. And if you're John Igbuno, you've got to fight him, either get around or three-quarter. But Yante Mayton, he's got great pair of hands. He's doing his work early, giving himself a good angle. And what a jump start he's given his Georgia offense here to start the second half. Mayton now 15 points to go along with five rebounds. Also a block shot in 21 minutes of action. Now, last year, the offense never would have gone through Yante Mayton. This year, he's become a go-to guy. Oh, and he can play extended minutes now. Last year, more of you only play about half the game. This year, playing extended minutes has worked on his body and his shape. Fading and firing and dropping two more. Cave on Allen. That young man has talent oozing out of his body. A little bit undersized, only about 6'4". But you see the ability to score the basketball. They plucked him out of Little Rock, Arkansas. A lot of broken-hearted Razorback fans were hoping he'd stay in state. And There's Mike a White steal. Had to work for him, right? Yes, yeah. right. Hill on the steal and the take draws the foul and almost got a chance for three the hard way. That's another foul on Kenny Gaines. His third. You see the change of, of from one end to the other by Casey Hill. That's the thing. I mean, if, if Florida can sustain on the on the glass rebounding the basketball by playing these small guards together be it Hill and Chioza and Kayvon Allen then that's a dynamic backcourt I mean you've got speed you've got the ability to attack the rim the passing Frazier checks back in for Georgia and you see coach Mike White, how about this for a stat? You like my factoids, right? Always. All right, I'm bringing it. If they're good, I mean, they're usually good. Uh, Just don't I, let I, me down here. Oh, this is top shelf. Mike White, three consecutive conference championships at Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech, one of seven programs in all college basketball to win their league three straight years. Mike White was the architect. There's a steal by Hill to Leon. Slam! Looks like your bag of factoids fired up that Florida defense. Frazier to Gaines. Three ball. Got there it. A go. silencer. Well, you got to like the job by Mark Fox, too. He takes Gaines out, settles him down, and Gaines comes right back in. It makes an impact. Mid-range jumper. Tapped around. Gators got it. Got to go up. Egbunu kicks it back out. Nice pass. Allen on a tray. Another offensive rebound. at seven for Egbunu. Tries a little sneaky pass and somehow gets it through to Finney Smith. That's not necessarily the approved solution. You want Egbunu to go up with that. I don't know how he got that pass through there, but what a delivery. Threading the needle. Man, and a block foul called. This is not the approved solution. If you're John Egbunu, you get it in here, go up. But what a find by the big fella. And Dorney. Uh, Dorian Smith, Finney, Finney Smith is the beneficiary. What a pass. I don't know how he got that through. <laughs> it's a tight window to say the least. <laughs> Eight point cushion for the Gators, Georgia basketball. away from the ball on Florida. Now the state has been set for the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. Heisman Trophy winner Derrick Henry carries a crimson tide 
as they face off against Deshaun Watson and the undefeated Clemson Tigers. Tune in Monday, January 11th at 8.30 on ESPN, also streaming live on Watch ESPN. What do you like in that one, Chris Spatola? Ooh, gotta put I gotta, you on the spot. I gotta go with Bama. I'm gonna go with the brand. I'm gonna go with the coach. I'm gonna go with Derrick Henry. I'm going Bama. Convincing argument. I will not argue. Obey day on the layup and then contact on the other end. There's been no lack of physical play tonight. Not dirty. Just what you would expect at a conference game. Well, during their shoot around, Mike White, I mean, how many times did he say paint touches, mm -hmm. paint touches, paint touches? So he's not telling his team not to shoot, but he's re-emphasizing getting that ball into the paint and giving themselves an opportunity to score at the rim or play inside and then out. Free throw knocked down by Casey Hill. Mayton comes back in after a breather, a much-deserved breather. And Willridge will come in for games. One for two from the line, tapped around and into the hands of Mayton. The lead swells to seven now for Florida, though, 51 44. That's another storyline, too. Neither team has shot it well from the foul line today. Frazier pulling up, can't get it to go. Frazier like has this. not hit a three all night. Well, and Mayton back in the game, he's been so good to start this half. You'd love to see a post touch for Yante Mayton. I mean, if you're J.J. Frazier, you can get that shot at any point in the shot clock. It's just not a good look at that point. And then Frazier just picked up his third foul. So he'll go to the bench, or will he? Now they're going to keep him in. He's going to get talked to over there on the sideline as Hill goes back to the charity strike. And I'm not, I mean, that's a shot that J.J. Frazier can hit. But at that point, Yante Mayton comes back in. He's had success on the block. Give him a touch and see what, what he creates off of that. You know, I, I wonder if that was a little bit of a frustration shot for Frazier. That's the first three-point attempt he's had tonight. Yeah, I mean, that could happen. It certainly wouldn't be the first time a guy has felt he deserved at least a shot. Yeah, he's been bottled up pretty well by that Gator defense. Nice pass. Edwards might have had it blocked from behind by Egbunu. He at least altered it. And now a technical foul on Mark Fox. He wanted a foul on the other end. Uh, he, you know, I don't know about the technical foul. I, you you got to let a coach. I mean, he felt like Mike Edwards got fouled, and I think he feels like there's been a few calls down there when his guys have gone to the basket that he has not liked. Well, he's going to get his money's worth now. Jacket is off. Plenty of choice words. Yep, toss it away. It's going to go jacketless the rest of the way. He might have to take off the tie if he has another call that doesn't go his way. One for two, meanwhile, for Allen. Let's take another look, see what Mark Fox is irate about. He thought this was a foul. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, look, Egbunu may have gotten that, that shooting arm there, and, and Mark Fox is not happy about it. Egbunu will get a breather now for Florida. A 10-point lead, Georgia was Cutting into the deficit there, making it a one possession game. Now it's back to 10. Benny Smith blocked. Picked up by Frazier. Three on two. To man, finishes. Beautiful go. transition. Eight point game. 
Chioza guarded by Gaines. S pulls up deep two, got it. I tell you what, he's he's becoming better and better and better. And now that he's in that starting lineup, he just creates so many different plays defensively, passing the basketball there. I mean, if you're going to go under the screen and play off him, he can pull up. He's still pretty lean. Tell us he put on about 15 pounds of muscle in the offseason. There's that jump hook, not this time. Yeah, it's good position by Oguede, just not a shot he's ready to hit yet. Three ball, no, and a foul, I believe, away from the shot. And he called Kenny Gaines. I don't know if he's coming off, but I'll tell you what, Florida is best when they can turn defense into offense. It's the first big Monday of the season on ESPN, and is it ever big? At 7 o'clock, Marcus Page and the seventh-ranked Tar Heels battle the Knowles and their freshman combo of Dwayne Bacon and Malik Beasley. Then we're at the raucous Allen Fieldhouse, but Buddy Heald and the third-ranked Sooners face Perry Ellis and number two Kansas in a journey to the tourney matchup. Now, both those teams won today, so expect that to be a one-versus-two matchup on Monday night, the new AP poll will come out about seven, eight hours before the tip. What a game we look forward to on Monday night. You've got a player of the year, probably the leader in the clubhouse right now, and Buddy Heald. And I was in studio last week on ESPNU saying that I think Oklahoma right now is the best team in the country. And this whole, you know, Kansas has held a vice grip on that Big 12. This could be the year where Oklahoma with that old backcourt Spangler inside, a team that really gets after you on that defensive end. It's going to be a great, great matchup, Mike. Kansas with Perry Ellis, Wayne Selden. How about this? Oklahoma led the Big 12 last year in defensive efficiency, and now as a team they're shooting 46% from three. I mean, they can do no wrong, no wrong right now. Lon Kruger, who once did an excellent job here in Gainesville, led him to a Final Four in 94. Doing an exceptional job in Norman. And Kansas beat up on a, on a good Baylor team, you know, at home, but beat up on a good Baylor team today. And Oklahoma, one of three teams in the top ten in both adjusted offense and defense. Mayton fouled on a jump hook shot. Now you brought up a good point a moment ago as a coach. When you look at team fouls, the differential, what do you think Mark Fox is thinking right now? Well, that made it 10 to 3. So right now, Georgia has 10 fouls. Florida had two, so Mark Fox looks at that, feels like Mike Edwards gets fouled going to the basket, and he's not happy. And, and my thing is, if you're an official, it's going down to the other end. Mark Fox, let him make his point. I mean, I, I don't think a technical foul is necessary there. It was yeah. a close foul on Edwards. It's 10 to two in fouls. Let a guy have his time, have his day, and then if he doesn't settle down, then ring him up. I'm with you, and Mark Fox, who's been in this league now seven years, does not have a reputation for picking up tees. Not he's not all. your he's nope. not your uh, prototypical yeah. hothead. Mayton rattles home the second nine point game. 16 points for Mayton. Gators so back in the zone, Mike. Looking at that zone, trying to find a crease. Benny Smith, double pump in the lane, gets it to go. You know, with how poorly Florida has shot it, I asked Mike White yesterday, I said, have you been zoned a lot? He said, no, I actually would prefer it. We, Dorian Finney-Smith is so dynamic when we put him right at that foul line, and you see right there. I mean, he could put it on the floor. He's got length and size and a good finisher. Shot clock at seven. Here's Frazier. Into the corner. Shot is blocked. Loose ball. And out of bounds to Florida anyway. Could have been a shot clock violation. Could have been out of bounds to the Gators either way. Look at this play. What an athlete. Casey Hill rising. The timing doesn't foul. 
you know, become a great, and they are. They are a very good defensive team, one of the top five defensive teams in the country. When you start closing out and not giving up easy looks, that's when you become great. A good extra effort there by Casey Hill. There's Finney Smith again. Baseline jumper, too strong. Agbudu, another offensive rebound. And poked away out of the hands now of Frazier. Fires a rare air ball. Hill shake and bake. Finney Smith on a tray. And the smallest guy on the floor comes away with a rebound. Gino on a three. Contact. And that'll go against Florida. Yeah, here's the question, Mike. It, it, how long Mark Fox keeps Kenny Gaines on the bench? He's got four fouls, but they need his scoring. And so with an 11-point game and only nine minutes left, you can't allow this thing to get away from you. You might be able to sustain defensively, but you've got to have somebody out there who can make a scoring impact. Yante Maton on the bench. Kenny Gaines on the bench. I mean, two guys who are your prolific scorers. It'll be interesting to see how long Mark Fox goes with those two guys on the bench. Yeah, Maiton's just getting a breather with the two fouls. Gaines with the four. We got nine minutes left to go, but I'm with you. I, I don't know how much longer you can go without Kenny Gaines and his shooting right now. Man. Rejected out of bounds by Finney Smith. Charles Mann has not been able to penetrate and finish tonight like he normally does. You've got athletes at the rim, you've got rim protectors. They're good on the ball is Florida. Then once you get around, and that was just a nice individual play by Dorian Finney Smith, but it's been tough sledding at the rim because you've got athletes and length. And there's a foul on Hill. Bumping bodies with Jackson. Turtle Jackson hits the deck. So now Florida's starting to, foul's starting to even up. Funny how that works, right? Now 10 to 5. Man on the inbounds. And just throws a pass wide to Jackson. That's not a kind of mistake you expect out of a senior. No, it's not. And here comes Kenny Gaines, and here comes Yante Maiden. Yep. With 8.44 to go, keep an eye on number 12 in black. Really can't afford to pick up that fifth foul. He's up top. As Hill delivers, gets by him. Kick out pass. Out of the corner, Chioza. Hill probes the right side and draws the foul. This Georgia zone, it's an, it's an odd front, meaning they've got one guy at the top of it, and all Florida's doing is just setting a top ball screen. The guard is coming up, off, and he's got kind of an overload. So he can either kick to the corner, but the defense has to make a decision as the guard's coming off that top ball screen, and it's been tough for Georgia. Those guards can turn the corner like Casey Hill did there, and Gets himself fouled. And the Gators are not doing themselves any favors at the free throw line. 16 of 28, that's 57%. Uh, and they're 62 on the year, so yeah. I, you know they're not far. They're last in the SEC. Not something they've done well. But putting Georgia in the foul trouble has been a component to this game. Man. Throws it up there and draws the foul. So Charles Mann finally getting some reward for the penetration. Charles Mann, Georgia's first ever two-time first-team preseason All-SEC vote-getter as named by the coaches. 
Off to a slow start this season, averaging under 10 points a game. Shooting percentage down. Gets that one. Well, he's not a great shooter, so he does have good size. He's not a great shooter, so I, you know, I think defenders, you give him about an arm and a half, you back off him a little bit because the penetration is what he wants to do. He wants to get into the paint and create a foul situation. Ten-point game. Man with seven. See that odd front from this zone by Georgia. Out of the corner. Inside, Leon. No, and the rebound to the Bulldogs, Wilridge. Man, wheels, deals. That's a shot that normally man finishes. Chioza on a three. Timeout. They start hitting shots like that. Good night. I mean, they're just. That's the one area where this team has struggled, was behind that arc. They start hitting shots. This Florida team can make some waves. SEC opening Saturday. The Gators lead to the Georgia Bulldogs, 62 to 49, with 7:26 to go. Some other games going on around the conference: Missouri and a laugher over Savannah State, Auburn over Tennessee, Alabama. Uh, victorious Texas A&M big over Arkansas Kentucky defeating Ole Miss the Gamecocks that game was it was a foul upon folks the Gamecocks prevailing 86 76 Vanderbilt up on Ben Simmons and LSU we will be in South Carolina a week from tonight as the undefeated Gamecocks will take on the Vanderbilt Commodores they've got a midweek game at Auburn on Tuesday night trying to remain one of the three undefeated teams in college basketball. Man, trying to feed the post, nothing there. Mayton quickly doubled back out to man. A runner off the mark and out of bounds to Georgia. We will step aside with 7.02 to play. It's the Gators 62 and the Bulldogs 49. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Samuel Adams for the love of beer. 7.02 to go here in the O'Connell Center, Gainesville, Florida. The Gators on top of the Georgia Bulldogs, 62 to 49. The Gators, of course, led by head coach Mike White, one of four first-year head coaches in the Southeastern Conference. Mike White taking over for Billy Donovan, who, of course, is now at Oklahoma State. You look at the bioblast for Mike White, his first year in Gainesville, former guard in Oxford. Back in the late 90s, so he's familiar with the SEC. Jacksonville State assistant coach, Ole Miss assistant coach. Talked about the job he did in Ruston, Louisiana, earning the Conference USA Coach of the Year Award. And as we talked about earlier, a guy that was not ready to leave necessarily would take a, a special job to get him away from Louisiana Tech. This was that special job as Mayton has the shot blocked out of bounds to Georgia. And it, it just feels like a good fit, Chris. It does. You know, a lot of similarities between he and Billy Donovan, both guards when they played, both a pressing, attacking style of defense. And he has brought that. There's AD Jeremy Foley, who hired Mike White. And it's a home run hire, a guy who's going to, I think, have great success here. If he can get the recruiting train moving, certainly X and O wise and defensively, he's a terrific coach. Jordan's you know, got to get some offense going. I was going to say, seem a little unsettled. I mean, you know, they're, they're coming down the end of the clock, yeah. going to those ball screens. They're really not getting a whole lot out of it.
Igbono forced that one and rejected. That was Edue, who doesn't get a whole lot of PT for Georgia, but swatted that one. Now Adoue will go back to the bench. And they'll bring in another big body, the 6'8", 250-pound Obede. Air ball from three, but another offensive rebound for Florida. Finney Smith back up top, shot clock at five. Got to get something. Hill on a three. Egg Boodoo again. And out of bounds to Florida. Egg Boodoo has been relentless on the offensive glass he, tonight. He has. He's outworking those guys. I mean, this is, look, he's a great athlete. He has good size, and he looks like an Adonis. But he is also outworking these guys on the interior for that basketball. That is six offensive rebounds for Egg Boonu. He's got 11 total. Yeah, he's been relentless tonight. Hale on a reset. And the Gators content with waiting a little clock here. Hill in the lane. Gets the short jumper to drop. And that's where the offensive rebounds kill you because Georgia's first shot defense hasn't been bad. They've gotten Florida to take the shots they want. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Kenny Gaines elevates. <laughs> a two-hand flush from out of nowhere. Did that just happen? That's what they call the hammer drop. Oh, jeez. See if that wakes up Georgia on offense. 13-point lead for the Gators. Tapped around. And out of bounds to Florida. Yeah, that's why I say it's it's another look at this play coming right into your living room. That's called the hammer drop. I've now named that Kenny Gaines. What an athletic play. But on the other end, again, another play where you get Florida to take a contested three, a shot that they miss badly, but the ball goes back to Florida. Georgia's first shot defense in this zone has been good. They just haven't been able to limit Florida one shot. Gators 15 offensive rebounds as Hill throws that one into the second row. Now the way Kenny Gaines jumped on that last one, he might have been able to reel that one in. The Bulldogs need to reel some offense in. We're under five minutes to play, a 13-point deficit to cut into, and that's not going to get it done. They get it back with Mayton. Mid-range jumper. Offensive rebound. Oh, goodness. Georgia can't buy a bucket. Scooped up by Allen. Good decision. Shot clock under 10. Baseline drive and a bump foul along the way. Yeah, we've seen some big time dunks in this game. Maybe none bigger than that one by Kenny Gaines. Brenda Fitzgerald back in studio coming up in eight and a half minutes. Jeremy Hemsley, the San Diego State Aztecs will take on Utah State out in Logan, Utah. This one will tip on ESPN3 on the Watch ESPN app. It'll be on ESPNU when you guys are done. Mike, Chris, back to you. 64-51 our score here with 3.58 to play. Mike working alongside Chris Spatola as we crack open the NCAA Notebook. Michigan State bouncing back today with a win against Minnesota. Kansas dominating Baylor. Wayne Selden, 24 points. And Xavier gets back on track, defeating ninth-ranked Butler. Yeah, and Xavier had to do that without Edmund Summers, still out with that concussion. And a big bounce back, like you said, for Xavier. I mean, they got blown out at Villanova, probably their worst, by far their worst performance of the year. Nice bounce back at home against a good Butler team. And, of course, Kansas and Oklahoma winning today. Is that setting up the one-versus-two matchup 
on Monday night. What a great game to tune into about 48 hours from now. Meanwhile, the Gators stretching the lead. It's 14, 65, 51. Georgia had this game right near a tie early going second half. And then all of a sudden went cold from the field, didn't box out on defense, and the Gators opportunistic on both ends, now out to a 15-point lead. Castle talking things over with Mark Fox. Apparently the sub came in too soon is the call. Much to do about nothing. Mark Fox has already been teed up once. He's just at the point where he's going to shrug the shoulders the rest of the way. Gaines fading and firing. Oh, it's been that kind of second half for everybody for Georgia, with the exception of that highlight dunk. Not much going the way of Georgia on offense. We wondered how the Gators would come out in this ball game tonight after a heartbreaking loss to in-state rival Florida State. I think the answer was emphatic by Coach White and company. Desperation three. And Mayton bumped on the rebound. That's going to be a foul on Florida, and that'll send Mayton to the free throw line for a one and one. You know, these are big, big free throws. A chance to make it a 13-point game. The, the thing is, I'm, I'm curious, Georgia continuing to sit in the zone, so you're essentially allowing Casey Hill to dribble the basketball out around half court for, you know, 20 seconds before Florida initiates. Be interesting to see in the next couple possessions if Georgia picks up man or, or tries some trapping, something to create potentially some turnovers or, or a little bit of a quicker tempo here. Mayton, one of the top free throw shooters in the Southeastern Conference, coming in at 78%. He's got 17 points. He's really been the lone bright spot tonight for Georgia on offense. Two for two, still a ball game. And here's the pressure. Hill on the handle. Hill Man. called for the foul as Gaines, and that's his fifth. We talked about the advantages of playing Chioza and Casey Hill together. Perhaps no bigger advantage than at the end of a game with the lead. Uh, you just, it's so hard to pressure both those guards. So quick off the bounce. You used to get 30 seconds to replace a fouled out player. Thankfully, they cut it down to 15. Basically, coaches were just using that as an additional timeout. Now they've sped up the process a little. Yeah, either timeout or additional seconds to yell at the officials for the <laughs> fifth foul. That's right. Eight points tonight for Casey Hill. And over the back on Agbunu. So another one and one for Georgia. Yeah, well, and it, you know, now Georgia gets to march down 94 feet and take free throws without time coming off the clock. Igbunu, a young player, a red shirt sophomore will figure out in time that with three minutes left and you're up 13, you don't need to go for an offensive rebound in that position. That's what we call a teaching moment, right? If you win. Yes. <laughs> Mayton. Knocks it down. You're right about Mate and Mike. He, he has not only been the lone bright spot, he's been a star tonight. Yeah. And, and he really has been all season. He is the most improved player thus far in the SEC. That might be the least of the accolades he picks up this year. I mean, he, he's got a chance Absolutely. to be an all-conference player when it's all said and done. He's got 20 points tonight. And 
Florida, in a generous mood, gives it right back. Still a ball game, 11 points, need a bucket here. So many careless giveaways on both sides tonight. Again, no Kenny Gaines out there. And another foul on Florida. I mean, you're just, you're gift wrapping points at the free throw line for Georgia. We've talked a lot tonight about Mayton and justifiably so. Last year, I mean, he was just a nice kind of glue guy. Five points, four rebounds, 18 minutes a game. Look at the explosion in numbers this year. He's top 10 in the SEC in points, rebounds, field goal percentage, blocks. He's done it in all areas. And a big miss free throw right there from Derek Oguede. Yeah, big miss on the front end, almost a steal by Jackson. Florida milking it again under 10. Benny Smith with five to shoot. Got it, that is a dagger. Man, bumped and fouled by Kayvon Allen. You know, if you're Mark Fox and you're Georgia defensively, I mean, you'll, you'll kind of live with this shot. A guy who has not shot it well in Finney Smith, you had late pressure over Yante Mayton. Just a backbreaker by Dorian Finney Smith. 14 point lead, timeout on the floor. As we remind you once again, less than 48 hours away from a really big Monday. Again, it starts off with North Carolina and Florida State. And then number one versus number two, that's what it's going to be when the new poll comes out. Raucous Allen Fieldhouse, Buddy Heald, who's been exceptional this year for Oklahoma and Lon Kruger, the Kansas Jayhawks. A journey to the tourney matchup. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot again, Chris Matola, but that's what I like to do. What do you like in that one? In Oklahoma, Kansas? Absolutely. You know, I, at home, I, I like Kansas. Uh, but I still, again, I still believe, I mean, th this is the thing with Oklahoma. Four of their five starters have been in that starting lineup for three years. I mean, you don't see that in college basketball. Right. You've got three seniors in the backcourt. Ryan Spangler's a junior. They have balance. They're one of the few teams that's in the top 10 in both adjusted offense and defense. And I, I love that team. All that said, Allen Fieldhouse is a tough place to play. And Kansas may be the second best team in the country. Should be a great matchup on Monday night. The front end of that matchup won't be bad either. North no. Carolina, another veteran yeah. team that Roy Williams has this year. You know, and a team I, I still think that, that they've got a much higher ceiling. I, at the start of the year, I thought Carolina was going to be by far the best team that ACC. They have struggled at times. Again today, I mean, Georgia Tech had them on the ropes. A Carolina team, they have unique size up front. We know Marcus Page is terrific. That'll be a good game, that first matchup. I was watching our... Uh, cohort Seth Greenberg earlier today he likes Miami he thinks Miami's the best team in the ACC this year well coaches former coaches and, and I'm I would say the same thing we love old right right and so if you've got three red shirt seniors guys who are in their fifth year in your starting lineup which Miami does you love it. it's the reason I love Oklahoma I mean I just unless you're Duke and Kentucky who are on another level recruiting wise you everybody else it pays to be old under two minutes to go, and this one a 13-point cushion for the Gators. That's a brick fired up by Jackson. Frazier going to try it, and he finally connects from downtown. He has not been a big factor in this game. So deadly. Again, Coach White telling us the key for him, if he had to pick one thing, contain Gaines and Frazier from three-point land, they have been bottled up all night long. They have, and credit that Florida defense, those guards, for Florida have accepted the challenge. But it's one of the things you love about Georgia, right? The narrative on Georgia coming into this year was the seniors in the backcourt and then Frazier along with them just been bottled up. 
How about that? Eight, they've taken 21 threes, has Florida. I mean, that, that's the other thing coming in, Mike. Like, you're looking at a stat sheet as a coach, and you've got a Florida team they've shot 27% from the three-point range, and yet they've attempted 36 more than their opponents. They're shooting almost 22 threes a game. For a team that's shooting 27%, Mike White, something he had to kind of look at, I think, over the last several weeks. And tonight they hit them. I mean, that's been the difference. Yep. They hit the threes, and they've shot 35 free throws. So they've been busy from outside, and they've drawn some contact. Of course, Georgia has to provide contact here. Fourth foul on Frazier. That's another thing Mike White was very honest about with us. Talk about this Florida team. He said, you know, look, I'm still learning about this team. I'm, I'm experimenting. There's a little bit of trial and error that I have to go through with this group. Remember, this Florida team had a losing record last year. Yeah. Only the second one Billy Donovan had. And so the expectations, while they were somewhat high for Florida based on talent, there was a lot of things that had to be figured out by Coach White. And he admitted he's talked with Coach Billy Donovan, who's been gracious with his time, to try to get some advice, some scouting on his guys. Uh, the foundation was there. I mean, it, you know, Mike White said that. The foundation defensively especially was there. The narrative hasn't changed. I'm using the buzzword, the, the, the word narrative. We all use it nowadays. It hasn't changed on this Florida team. It was a team last year that struggled to score, especially in the half court, but was great defensively. It's It's been the same this year for this Florida team. And Mike White and his staff have had to really stress fundamentals. They've gotten these guys into the gym, doing extra work to shoot the basketball. But defensively, They've been terrific. Narrative is the buzzword tonight. I thought it was the one you used, study of snakes. You know, herpetology That's is my a, buzzword. It's a very popular Woo. word. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, an ill-advised foul fouling a three-point shooter up by double digits with a minute 35 to go. Frazier ordinarily a very good free throw shooter. Well, that makes it a nine-point game with 95 seconds to play. Well, Florida not a good free throw shooting team. You got to lay a foul on one of these guys. Right. And that's not the one. I mean, Kayvon Allen, by far their best free throw shooter. Chioza's got it, and George is going to play it straight up. Interesting decision. This three possession game. Mark Fox deciding not to foul there. Allen, shot clock ticking down. Step back three. Oh, my goodness. 18 for the freshman. Jackson, no sale, and now it'll be a free throw exhibition for the Gators with under 50 seconds to play. Yeah, I, I think if you're Mark Fox, you, you'll kind of live with this shot. This is a great individual play. I mean, look, defense is not bad, but sometimes great offense is better than great defense. Look at the step back through the legs into the pull-up. That's a freshman, folks. That is not an easy shot. That's a good looking player in Kayvon Allen. Kayvon Allen, remember now, he was a, a Billy Donovan commit, and then when Billy Donovan departed, there was talk that maybe Allen would change and would try to go elsewhere. Mike White had to travel over to Little Rock, Arkansas, and basically convince Kayvon, hey, look, you fell in love not just with Billy Donovan, but with the University of Florida. Gainesville's still a good spot. We can use you. Yeah. I think that's going to be a good marriage. Uh, the, the best recruiting job, and he, Mike White may not get credit for it, but when, when the story is written, the best recruiting job he's done has been getting those three guys to recommit. Because you can build a program off of those guys. We haven't seen much of Kavarius Hayes tonight. Mike White so high on him, thinks he's going to be a terrific player here at Florida. We have seen how good Kayvon Allen can be. It's a young team, only one senior on this Florida team. Yeah, most of their top players, freshmen and sophomores. Of course, Finney Smith, the senior. 
And he'll no doubt play a big role in conference play, in which the Gators appear to be on their way to a 1-0 start. One for two for Chioza. He has 11. Under a minute to play. Foul on Florida with 29.9 on the clock. This will be another teaching moment. You don't need to foul here, am I right? Uh, you don't. <laughs> you do not need to foul here. That is the captain obvious point of the night provided by yours truly. Love the aggressive play, but at this point, it's academic. Gators leading at 77 to 63 with 29.9 on the clock. Empty trip for Edwards. And the Gators can just let the clock bleed and improve to 9-4 on the season. 1-0 in conference play. Terrific performances tonight by several Gator players including Allen, the freshman, with 18. Egbunu, 12 points, 12 rebounds. Another double-double for that young man. Yeah, this is a good effort. I mean, they shot the ball well. It got them kick-started. But their defense, was Florida, was outstanding tonight. They hold serve at home. It's a good win. That's it from Gainesville. Gators victorious over the Bulldogs as we send you to San Diego State, Utah State.